Hey guys, it's Agustin Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on Oculus Quest development. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up hands with physics, which is the prototype that you see playing behind me. I'm also going to walk you through creating a brand new scene, bringing in the Oculus integration, bringing in some of the prefabs that are going to be required, such as the hand prefab for the right hand and also the one for the left hand. I'm also going to show you what changes you need to make in order for the physics to work correctly. And I also want to introduce you to LearnXR.io, which is my new platform for VR training. Make sure you check it out because I'm really excited about that new platform. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the results of running these in Unity. So I'm just going to go ahead and play. And you can see that the shadows are working. I can see my hands. I have two different textures, one on the right hand and a different one on the left hand. I can also interact with different objects. These ones don't have any gravity, so you can see they're not really falling down, they're just in the air. I can interact with them and then touch them and the physics engine in Unity, it's working really well. Let's see how I can pick, that, pick things up, move them around. And if I fast forward a little bit, let me just show you this other area. See, I can pick up different cubes. So I try to do different things in the game, you know, have more, a bigger mass on some objects than other ones. Some of them with gravity, some of them without gravity. As you can see here, I'm trying to pick up different cubes, putting them in the top of the cube. And then this one just try to, to align it, but it's all working really well. I'm really happy with the physics. You can see that I can now, I can also, you know, try to hit the cubes and basically push them out. And all of that is working really well. So on the right side, I tried to do something similar, except I changed the sky. So I'm still using hand tracking, using the custom prefabs that the Oculus integration provides. But I wanted to try and see if Final IK would work, because Final IK has the, and also Puppet Master, they have these puppets that you can use. And I wanted to see if I could interact with them by using the physics components from the hands. And it turns out that I can actually pick up the, the little dudes and, you know, mock them. And they, it, it just, it just turned out way better than I thought it was going to be. So if I pick him out, and you can see this one picking, picking him out as well. And he just keeps, you know, playing its animation. And just experimenting and trying to start hitting them. And it turned out to be to be really fun. So what I'm gonna show you is what I need to do, what I needed to do to get this working. And I'm also going to walk you through creating a very similar scene to what you see right here. So the first thing that you need to do to make sure the physics are working well in Unity, this might not be performance, but for, in my case, all I wanted to do was just make sure that hand tracking was going to work well with physics. So this is not meant for you to build something that it's going to ship with this setting. This is just meant for me to do an experiment. So I just want to make sure that you understand that. So the fixed time step, I set it to a very large, very low number. That way the, the fix update is going to execute, you know, more frequently. So make sure you, ch you change that number to, you know, very, very low number. In my case, I did 0 0.005. And then that gave me really cool results on the on the physics because it's evaluating the physics more frequently than it would do with the default Unity settings. So now the next thing that we need to do is now that you know the physics changes that you need to do, the other thing that I did on most of these components is one of the things that you could do is you can change this to continuous sp speculative and that's going to make the physics look a lot better. I decided to change it all to discrete. And after doing a lot of testing, I think most of them work really well. So you can see every single one of these objects has a box collider. They also have a rigid body. On most of them, I'm using, I'm using gravity, so that's why they're falling you know, into the actual ground. Where these ones, I wanted to see how they would react without having gravity, and that's why they're staying in the air, because I can push them, because there's no gravity set on them. I also changed the mass of these ones to be a greater number, so I have a mass set to two versus these ones I think I haven't sent to one, which is the default that Unity sets. And then these Muppets here, they're basically the, the puppets that come with the asset, the Puppet Master asset, which I'm going to be putting in the description of this video. So how do you go about creating something like this? And that's what I'm going to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a brand new scene with nothing on it. And then we're going to be, I'm going to be walking you through what we need to do. So first thing, we're going to just click on scene, right click on scenes, go into create. And then we can go ahead and look for the scene, that, the scene basically option that we're going to be selecting. And this one is going to be, I'll just call it the YouTube demo. YouTube demo. And then I'll just double click on it and it's just not going to have anything, right? 
So the next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to have a sky that was, you know, it was going to look cool. So I went in, create a, a new material. This material can be created by just right clicking on it and then going into material. And then you can simply just search for procedural. Let me do that again, procedural. And that's going to give you a procedural material. So that's what I did to create the sky material. I'm going to delete this. And then I just change the properties just based on what I wanted. Then what you need to do is you need to go into here in rendering, light settings, and then I just, you know, associate the, the new sky to my new, basically my new lighting. I also set the auto generate lighting to on, that way all the lighting gets generated automatically so I don't have to bake it manually. So make sure you change that, it's gonna make your scene look better. Then the next thing that I need to do is you need to make sure you download the Oculus integration. So you can download that, you can either look at one of my previous videos or you can actually go into the asset store, not the package manager, the asset store, and then search for Oculus and it's gonna, it's gonna be the first thing that you find in the asset store. So if I look for Oculus, it's going to give you Oculus. You can just import it into your project and then you're gonna have an Oculus folder just like the one that I have here. So that's the asset you need to download. And then the next thing that I, that I normally do is I, I love using the, the Pro Builder. You can use Pro Builder to do this or you can just use the default. Looks like on this one I didn't use Pro Builder so we can just create a new plane. It's gonna create a new plane and that's gonna be basically our floor. And then I'm also using another asset for the grid and this one is called grid box prototype. So that gives me a lot of cool materials and those are the materials that I'm using for the demo. So I can use some, something like that. I can make this bigger so I can see the actual material. And that's basically, you know, something like that works. And then I can just duplicate this multiple times. And then I can just go ahead and snap it. Make sure that I snap it to that vertices. And then I can clone it one more time. We can probably just also snap this one here. And then I'm gonna snap it one more time. And I'm basically, you know, trying to replicate what I show you. So these ones are gonna be all over ground. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call it ground. And ground, there we go. And then make sure that it has a physics collider. And in this case, it's gonna be a mesh collider. I also like to use rigid bodies because I'm using Puppet Master. This is not required, but you can do it if you're using Puppet Master. And then make sure that you set it to kinematic so that it doesn't fall into the nowhere because we have gravity set to one. And then that's that piece. So now the next piece that you need to work on is you need to basically add what's called an OVR rig. So I'm gonna search in here for OVR and we can just search OVR rig, OVR camera rig. I'm getting confused with the XR toolkit. And then, you know, as soon as you search for OVR camera rig, you can just drag it and drop it. It's gonna give you your, you know, your cool rig right here. I like to have everything at zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and offset this a little bit. And that way we can start with the camera right there on the pivot point. Let's go ahead and offset it just one, just a little bit more and we can get close. So it's gonna be our camera here. That's where we're gonna be putting our hands. So there's two ways that you can add hands in, in this. You can use what's called, there's two, there's two hands basically. So I can search for hand. And if I search for hand, there's gonna be a hand prefab somewhere in here. And there is, you can either use the OVR hand prefab and that one is not gonna allow you to look at the skeleton. So you can use this one if you like to. I like using this custom one because you can look at the mesh and then you can change the textures, which is gonna give you something to like the one that I just showed you that I was running. So it's gonna give you something like this because you can change and look at the mesh. So I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand my OVR camera rig. I'm also gonna be putting it on the top. I'm also gonna be deleting the main camera. We don't need the main camera because this one is going to have a camera by default. In fact, you can see the camera right there. Let's go ahead and increase the gizmo size so we can see the camera better. And then what I'm going to do is you can see that we have a left anchor and a right anchor. I'm going to write, I'm going to grab my left hand here. And if you make it bigger, you're going to be able to see that that actually says, it actually says that this is going to be underscore L. That means it's for the left hand. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it there. We can just say, Something that I do is I always unwrap this object because I'm gonna be modifying it. So I'm just gonna say unpack, not unwrap, unpack. I guess that's kind of similar. You can drag and drop this object here and also do the same thing with the right hand anchor. Go ahead and drag and drop it. Make sure that everything is set to zero, zero, zero so that we don't have any issues. And you can see that we have our cool hands there. Another thing that I think we, we need to do, we need to make these tiles a lot smaller. So let me go ahead and remove them because I think they're just too large. The textures don't look right. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's set it to be a 000. 
and I'm going to do one point, let's see, point 0.25, point 0.25, and point 0.25, and then if we go closer, that looks better. I'm going to do point 0.2, point 0.2, and then point 0.2. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now what we can do, we can just clone it. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it by holding my, basically is a command D in your Mac, and then if you're in a Windows, it's control D. And then I just hit in V to basically snap it to the points here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clone it here. And you don't need to make it this big. This is just what I did on my demo. So I'm just going to make it big because I want more space to play around. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it one more time here. And there we go. So now we have, you know, grounds everywhere. We have a nice, beautiful sky. I can also change all of these ones to just be, I like naming things correctly. So I'm going to name it like that. Excellent. And then the other things that we can now do, so we have hands, right? And if I get close here to my hand, mesh, I'm going to make the camera now a little smaller. There we go. Now we can see the hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the ground. Let's move it down a little bit. That way we can start seeing shadows. And the shadows look really nice. The The other thing that I'm going to give you as a tip, if the shadows don't look right, because we they might not look right out of the bat, make sure that you go to player settings and go into graphics and if you scroll down it's actually not under graphics this is going to be under quality and it depends on what quality i set it to ultra that is not meant to be performing make sure you set it to the right level i think it was set to normal to to i think it was low or i think it was set to medium to start with so i set it to high because i wanted the game to look beautiful and then the other thing that i also had to change was the shadow distance because I think Unity by default sets this number to 50. And if you do 50, the shadows look really bad, like crap, to be honest. So set it to a lower number because we're dealing with lower, you know, lower measures because we're in VR. Make sure you set it to a lower number. I did it to one and now the shadows look beautiful. So now that you have that and we have our ground, we can, which I can also move up a little bit. The next thing that I did is I assigned some materials because I didn't like the boring materials that these had which is a great, so you can, you know, you can pick any of these materials, you can make your own material. I think I'm going to go this time with a red, and then we can do perhaps a blue. And now you can see that is, you know, beautiful. I think it looks awesome. And then the next thing that I did is just start adding objects, right? I'm going to be, I'm going to game, game object, 3D. You can add a cube. And the cubes are going to be gigantic, so I'm going to do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and, and then, you know, that, I think that size look okay. And then I'm going to add my rigid body. I'm going to make sure that it has gravity, because in this case, I want this to have gravity. I'm going to place a couple objects in here. I'm going to be assigning different materials. I'm going to be cloning this guy. And then, you know, assigning a different material there. And then doing something like that. And I can also duplicate these ones a couple times, because we want to, we just want to, you know, play and experiment. And I think that's the key about doing things like this, because you want to have fun, you want to experiment. And then the other thing that I did is I, you know, I clone it again, and I made it really small, and we can put it, you know, right on the bottom there. You can clone it multiple times. That way we can, you know, we can push those, and that will take care of the cubes. So we have cubes in there that we can now play with. So I'm gonna name these ones cubes so that we have, you know, something to, something named correctly. And then I'm gonna go into game objects, 3D. Let's go ahead and create a sphere. Again, this is gonna be giant. I'm gonna do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. In my case, I wanted a sphere that were floating in the air so we can do what I show you in the video. And I'm going to just do, you know, a rigid body again. This one is not going to have gravity, so make sure you set it to zero. And then what I ended up doing is I, move it, I moved it a little bit closer. I think I made it a little bit smaller than that. We can, we can leave it that way. I think it's fine. And then I just clone it multiple times, clone it multiple times until I had enough of them. And then what I did is started, you know, just a lot of duplication, guys, because we want to... We just want to make sure that we can, you know, we can play with gravity, with physics as much as we can. And something like that, I think, works pretty well. And that, it's basically what everything that you need to do to play with the physics. And that's going to give you, again, something like what I just showed you here. It should give you the same results. I just have, you know, Puppet Master, but in addition to that, you can play with these spheres, just like they show you there. So. If you guys have any other questions about anything that I just show you, please let me know in the comments. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions on hand tracking, please let me know in the comments. Also, make sure to check out LearnXR.io because I'm really excited about the VR training and I think you're going to find it very helpful. Also, find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes. 
and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.